Good morning, everyone. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Reverend Susan Overland. I'm the Assistant Spiritual Director here at the Center, and I have the honor today to welcome our guest speaker, and for those of you who have been around long enough, she hardly needs no introduction, but Marilyn Pels has lived the New Thought Ancient Wisdom tradition for over 25 years. She's a gifted teacher, a speaker, a facilitator of, is that for me? <laughs> a facilitator of workshops and seminars. She does practitioner trainings and she also facilitates rituals to commemorate life's milestones. Marilyn inspires individuals to move through life's challenges with grace and humor by utilizing love, visioning, and affirmative prayer. She's deeply saturated with the results of her own study as, and her inner work as a licensed practitioner here at the Center for Spiritual Living and a senior at a Gabi ministerial school. So Marilyn's passion, joy, and sense of community have led also to the formation of the monthly heart space service. It happens the first Sunday night here every month. They just had their first anniversary. She's married to our fabulous Ken. They have two daughters and married uh, 50 years this December. <laughs> When Dr. David asked me to share today, I was just so, so grateful. I was grateful on a lot of levels. I was grateful for the ability and the, and the enjoyment of sharing with you. And I was grateful that uh, our topic for today is the call to the mystical path, because I've been on that journey for quite a while. And that's the title of my uh, dissertation for my ministerial thesis that I hopefully finish in June. I will. <laughs> and the third reason is the first, when he called me, I called Dave DeLulu right away and I said, who's on for the music? And he said, Charles Holt. No. My friend. <laughs> oh my God. Charles is a headliner in The Lion King on Broadway. I mean, he's <laughs> Someone who has definitely been called to a mystical path. Um, definitely called, as you can see in that, that song, Tapping. He has CDs available. but And he also is going to have a book out in May about his own journey on the mystical path. So I, we are blessed, absolutely blessed, to be right here, right now. And I know that each one of you came today, whether you knew it or not, you came because you were called to the mystical path. You wanted to know more. You wanted to be with others who are on a like path. And I'm grateful you're here. Really grateful you're here. As Charles said, we have tapping, tapping, tapping constantly. Those God taps, tapping on our mind, tapping on our hearts. Sometimes we answer, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're busy. Sorry, God, I'm a little too busy now. I'm raising my kids, I'm teaching a class, I'm doing my job. Whatever it is, we'll always get an opportunity to be tapped again. That's no doubt about that. Carolyn Mays, who is the author of our book of the month, two months actually, Entering the Castle, describes mysticism, and I really like the way that she describes it. She says, you are a container for God in this world. Each one of you is a container for God in this world. She goes on to say that mystics are hidden angels of the divine that inspire others through their example of living in accordance with their soul's direction. She says the new mystic should be called, rightly, a mystical activist. And they're everywhere, right here in the seat that you're sitting in. They're everywhere. And I'm grateful. My experience is that sometimes I say to myself, why me? You know, I, what do I know? I don't know anything. I'm, you know, I'm, just, I'm just a person going through life being a, a mom or doing this or doing that. And I think it's not the fear. Marianne Williamson said this so beautifully, and it, it was uh, Nelson Mandela quoted Marianne Williamson, so it's often been, this quote has often been attributed to Nelson Mandela. But Marianne said, it's not our fear of inadequacy that keeps us from moving out. It's our fear of our greatness. And I know that's true. 
I know that's been true all of my life. So mostly, what are we afraid of? I think we're, we're all recovering from something. Mostly, I think we're recovering from our small beliefs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, our small beliefs and our belief that, who me? I can't do anything. Well, in the first four years of my life, I was hospitalized much of that time. And I went through years of therapy to get over the, that fear of abandonment that I had. But it wasn't until last year in a, in a um, ministerial retreat that I realized the last piece of it. And in that last piece, God said to me at that time when I was a toddler in the hospital, God said to me, share with the other children. You know you are taken care of by me. The others don't. Now, I don't believe there's a me up there in the sky that's taking care of me, but I do know that I am absolutely loved and cared for and taken care of. And I know that each person wouldn't be here if you hadn't been led to the next step and the next step and the next step. I must have thought, who me, at that time, since I can't remember those first four years of my life very well, a few things. Uh, I must have thought, who me? What can I do? I'm in an isolation ward in the children's hospital. How am I going to move out and share? What can I do? However, my mother told me later that I yelled down to the other children that were crying in the hall in similar situations that I was in. And I said, it's okay, honey. Mommy is smoking a city. <laughs> <laughs> my mother had a cigarette habit. <laughs> and she'll be back soon. So it wasn't until a year ago that I really got hold of that piece of what I was told. And I've been lucky that each step of my path along the way unfolded. Not that there hasn't been trials and tribulations, but it definitely unfolded. And I know that for each of these moments that we have those experiences, those mystical experiences, that tapping on your head, that tapping in your heart, it's for these moments that we were born. I absolutely believe that. Moments of moving out of that limited belief that cause us causes us to fear our greatness. Illusions of lack, limit, limitation, fear. The fear uh, that we don't have anything to share. Ernest Holmes says if one would know God, he must penetrate deeply into his own nature, and then he must share what was revealed. Dr. David's really been talking to us about sharing what we're doing in our community, sharing it on Facebook, sharing it everywhere. And sharing it just as you go to the market doesn't make any difference whose life you're touching. You're touching someone's life today. It can make an entire difference. One of the things that I have been blessed to do is to read the All Is Well book and to listen to some of you as clients and in classes and hear your stories. Hear your stories of your mystical path. I had one come across my awareness this last, uh, well, two weeks ago. Karen Midlow sent me an article on the computer, and it so impacted me that I just sat there and wept. It's a story of Irina Sindler. She was a Roman Catholic, very active in the Roman Catholic Church, and she was a German. During World War II, Irina got permission to work in a Warsaw ghetto as a plumbing and sewer specialist. She had an ulterior motive. She knew what the Nazis' plans were for the Jews, being German. Irina smuggled infants out in the bottom of her toolbox that she carried, and she carried in the back of her truck, truck a burlap sack for the larger kids. Now she thought this thing out because she had also trained a dog in the back of her truck to bark, and the barking covered the kids' noises as she went through the Nazi checkout points. During her time of doing this, she managed to smuggle out 2,500 oh, children. Oh. 
2,500 children. She was caught, and the Nazis broke both her arms and legs and beat her severely. But she just died three years ago at the age of 98. That's someone who was called to the midst of the path. That is someone who said, I don't care what form it's going to take. I don't care if I like the form it's going to take. Think of how many trips she went through in fear with the number that she could get out each time. There's no logic. There's no logic or reason to it. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm a math teacher. <laughs> There's no logic to the mystical path. Some call it faith. I call it being tuned in, tapped in, as Charles said, tapped into that divine knower. Surrendering to the divine knower. I said, as I said before, you don't have to know an answer. All you have to know is that you know the knower and be willing to tap into it and ask. After that experience as a toddler, I continued to focus, as we do, on getting my schooling, starting a career, getting married, um, having children, and I continued to teach. So I got a little bit sidelined along the way, but I kept having the nudging and the tapping that I didn't understand at the time. And then was a, when I was about 30, I started absolutely saying, okay, something's, something's different. I love everything about my life. There's nothing I don't like right now, but there's something more, something more. The next step always came along. Obviously in those days of having children, young children, and teaching, and being married, I didn't really understand Einstein's theory of relative time. I didn't understand the idea that time is not linear, it's really relative. That didn't make very much sense to me at, at the time. But I realized that there isn't a time that's perfect. You have to just begin, and you're here. You're here. So you're, whether you're here for the first time or the umpteenth time, you've decided, I'm going, going to begin. I'm going to start that mystical path. Dr. Amit Goswami says, he calls it taking the discontinuous leap, obviously not the linear path. It's a thought that accelerates you along your growth and transforms you. Mysticism is, is described by some and defined by some as an experience that transforms your life 100%. I had an experience when my two daughters were teenager girls and I was teaching in a high school. And the Beyond the War movement came to me at that time and said, we want you to come and lead the media uh, to talk about the nuclear issue and the issue of war entirely. We want you to come and do this movement nationwide. I said, who, me? I mean, I'm a math teacher. What do I know about media? But something inside of me said, I absolutely have to do it. Now, the other thing you need to know is that this was a fairly well-paid job. It was in a private high school as a math teacher. And they said, and besides that, you have to work pro bono, which means I don't get a salary. So I said yes, knowing that well, I'd had a little bit of experience helping one of Mindy's playgroup mommies who ran for state senate. And I thought, well, I've got a little bit of experience. Well, what do I know? But I just knew that there wasn't going to be a world for my two daughters or for any of the teenagers I was teaching if I didn't say yes. So I did. And my gorgeous husband agreed. And he <laughs> became my uh, computer guru because in those days the computer was just getting up and running. And um, he still is my computer guru, <laughs> my lover. Uh, but what I'm so grateful for is I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have said yes. Because what happened was it was a tremendous success. We gave a Beyond War Award. I was part of a team that gave a Beyond War Award to Gorbachev and Reagan for what they had done up to that point to resolve the Cold War. 
It was the first time, this was 1985, it was the first time that five continents had been linked by satellite, something that's just a messy thing that's done for sports and everything today. And in that process, we got media, front page of the LA Times, CBS, NBC, everything moved exactly as one might have had a well-orchestrated plan, and I certainly didn't have a well-orchestrated plan. Thank God I was sent to New York to study and, and find some of the media tricks. But whatever, I didn't know any of that was going to happen, and I just said yes. So I invite you to continue to say yes, no matter what it is, whether you know it or whether you don't. And then, in Los Angeles, I found Science of Mind at Agape Spiritual Center. When I first got there, I didn't want to take foundations class because I was afraid that I might override this wonderful feeling I had sitting in the audience listening to the music, such as Charles. And listening to that music and that message, I thought, oh, I don't want to know what these people really believe. <laughs> if I knew what they really believed, I might throw it out the window. And so I took prosperity class, I took uh, Brother Tete's soul retrieval, which was four nights a week from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., and I was teaching full time. And um, I just said yes, knowing that I needed to know more. But all of that's on the outside, what we need to know. What I learned in that process was that everything we have is really within us. What I learned from the Beyond War movement is that I didn't want to work in the political arena, in the media arena. I want to work with individuals. And I continued at that time to be taught the, the gift of prayer. And during the, I went on to take foundations, and the rest is history. I became, moved up here and became a practitioner up here. But that whole process of moving up here was, again, another God thing. For five months, I was praying for something to come along to relieve our financial situation. And I just kept praying every day, knowing that something would come along. And pretty soon, I heard this knock, knock, knock on my door. So I started, this was in February. I don't remember what year, but this was in February, and now it's July. And I opened the door, and there stood a couple with two children, two girls, one on either side of them. And they said, hello, we would like to buy your house and raise our two daughters in this house like you've raised your two daughters. I'm looking at them, I've never laid eyes on these people in my life, and they already know I have two grown daughters. I could not believe it. Uh, okay, uh, let me think about it. So, Obviously, we met some more, but the next day, the next day, Kent got offered the job here in San Jose. And I had said to God those five months ago, I want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, none of these fuzzy experiences. I want to know for sure my next step. <laughs> if I didn't know for sure, I got it. But the thing that I realized in that process of moving up here was that I really didn't want to do it. I really didn't want to leave LA. It was, I loved my job, I loved everything about, I loved where we lived, I loved what we did. I didn't really want to leave LA. That wasn't part of my thinking when I was praying to God. And what did I learn about that process? I learned that you don't have to like the form it comes in. You just have to do it. That's all you have to do. Can you believe that Irina Sendler liked what she was doing every day when she went by that guard? I can't imagine she did. I can't imagine she wasn't terrified every single day of her life. You don't have to know the form. You don't have to know where it's going. You just have to be able to say yes when you hear that God tap when you get a call to the mystical path, no matter what, no matter what the path says. I'm so grateful, so grateful to know that I'm not unique. 
I'm so grateful to know that each one of you listen to the God Tap every day, and you have the courage to share it, either with your family, in your jobs, wherever you are. I know you answer the call, and you know it when you listen. That's the other piece, listen. Charles said it, listen to the tapping. Listen. Our lives get so busy, the listening part kind of drifts away. But we can listen. We can listen for those God taps. We can be willing to take the discontinuous leap. We don't have to go from A to B to C. I'm laughing because I was just teaching, I, I tutor math and I was just t uh, teaching this the other day, <laughs> the logic aspect. But we don't have to say that A plus B equals C. We can hop over all the letters and go from A to Z. It doesn't really make any difference. We just have to be able to surrender. Surrender to the God tap. Surrender to those little voices that say, who me? I don't know anything. We just have to be willing to give up. And about six years ago, I got a God tap to go to ministerial school. So my first thing was I resisted for two years. I just kept saying, no, that's illogical. I mean, no, I'm not a spring chicken. I mean, what do you think you're going to do? And so I just resisted. And that's another principle. You can resist as long as you want, mm -hmm. but it'll get you. <laughs> if it's supposed to be the right thing, the next thing, you'll do it. And I'm so grateful, so grateful that I did it. And I will graduate in, in spring after four years. But I don't know where it's going. I don't need to know until I'm finished. I only need to know the next step at the time I need to know the next step. Know ahead of time where it's going. So you in this room answer the call. Answer the call every day. Dr. David said on the video today that he wants you to be nice today. So all you have to do is nice today. That's pretty cool. All of you are nice. So all you have to do is be nice today, but you have to share it with other people. You have to share your niceness. You have to move out. You have to share it with your family. So I'm asking you, I'm charging you, I'm asking you, will you answer the call? If so, say yes. 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 Louder. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Grateful. The world is grateful. Believe me. For this we are born. Jesus said that. He said, for this we are born. It has been misinterpreted and um, but having studied, gone back and studied the Aramaic with one of my teachers, um, I feel grateful to know that that's exactly the words that he used. For this, I was born. For what I'm saying is for this, we were born. To follow the mystical path, to say yes. It reminds me of that old Nike commercial that said, just do it. So I charge you today, just do it. Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go inside. I invite you to go inside.